Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be talking about um, Athena, the goddess war, so the god close version of Athena in Sensei Legend of Justice. Now the reason why I want to talk about this is because she is actually already in the gallery, so she's already in the game file even though she's not currently summonable. Um, however, Facebook announcement already said she is very much like 99% certain she will be the next character that will be coming up possibly later this week. So I just want to briefly talk through all of her skills, um, you know, close constellation of that, and also finish off with some of my thoughts on whether you should actually pull her or not, because I know some of you may be actually saving her for um, God Closeia, and you know, a single God Closeia is also a very good character, so you may be actually having a bit of a debate on which one to get, so i just like to share a few thoughts around that. All right, now um, I'm going to start off with just kind of describing what kind of character Athena uh, God Close is. So if we start off with her ultimate, this is a defensive ultimate. So basically what it does is basically protect all of the allies for 8 seconds. During that time, damage taken will be 40% lower and also will be restoring HP whenever any of them get attacked by ultimate. You can actually just think of this as an equivalent of Aris Moon's Crystal Wall. It's pretty much identical in fact. Crystal Wall half of the damage and lasts for 8 seconds. So, you know, in some sense it may actually be slightly better than this. But this one do have the advantage of that it becomes, uh, this is an ultimate attack. So depending on your Cosmo uh, gauge, etc., whether you're a charger, you can actually control when you release this if you want to play manually. So that's one thing to bear that in mind. Um, then the next one we have a Lupin skill. This is kind of her only offensive attack, I guess. Basically, what it does is that it do a bit of uh, damage over time for four seconds, and uh, within that time, all of the enemy will be taking a certain amount of attack, and also it's going to scale based on their current HP. So it can actually hurt by quite a bit because uh, it lasts for four seconds. A damage is done every 0.5 seconds. So basically, that means you are doing damage eight times and you are actually dealing damage equal to plus 4% of the target's current HP. So theoretically, you can do actually 30% of their HP out with this attack. So it's actually quite strong in terms of an attack for uh, a protector knight, I guess. Uh, the other really interesting thing about this is the last strike will actually stun the enemy for two seconds. So this is actually a really good control event. My only bit of doubt for this is that it lasts for four seconds and only the last one. I will actually stun the enemy. So there is a possibility that it's actually going to be quite easy to interrupt this skill when you actually go into battle. So this is something we have to wait to see whether you can actually interrupt this in the middle of that four seconds. Um, and that will kind of determine how good the skill really is. Um, then the next one, Halo Effect. This one is quite straightforward, but basically it says, um, all of the allies will obtain Cosmo per second, so that's great, right? Um, every two seconds they will gain an extra 250 Cosmo, so this is like an upgrade diversion uh, a serious opening skill, so this is a great ability to have. And on top of that, Athena is going to get increased defense of 40% for every ally alive. So actually, theoretically, you can increase this by 200 percent or maybe 160%, I don't know what that counts Athena herself. But either way, it's going to make Athena extremely bulky, so you can actually play her at the front. Then at the very end, uh, this one is possibly the one most controversial, which I'm not sure whether it's actually any useful. But basically what it says is when Athena takes any crit damage, she will obtain a shield. Now, this sounds really okay in, uh, if you just read it like this. However, what makes this skill potentially incredibly strong is that if you have level 30 of her clothes, in which case that when she triggered this, the shield will protect all of the allies. So now basically it means that when she, whenever she's getting crit, she is actually going to put up shield for every single one on the team, which sounds completely busted. Um, but the, the problem I am having with this skill is that you require a Cena to take critical damage. And if we actually reach towards the end game, especially with kind of the of the equipment from Protector Knights or of your land of trials for Protector Knights or artifact, potential Arayashiki, if you actually read a lot of the defensive Arayashiki, all of them would increase tenacity, which is going to be really annoying because tenacity, even though Asina's base kit is only 0.5%, so that 
basically means uh, what tenacity basically means is how easily is it for uh, opponent to land critical hit against you. So the higher tenacity, the less likely people will be able to land critical damage. Even though Asina has really low base tenacity, because of the equipment of the Araya, if you actually want to you know play a Protect Knight properly, you have to put off the me. You have to put the defensive artifact, you have to put the defensive Araya, and all of them are actually going to increase tenacity. And that basically means it's actually contradicting to what this trigger skill is able to do because it has really strict prerequisite asking Asuna to take critical damage first. And I can actually foresee an optimally built Asuna probably will only take critical damage once or twice per battle. So actually your entire skill is very wasted. And not to mention this OP ability from level 30 close is also going to be wasted. So that's the part I'm really not sure about. So, uh, with all of that being said, I think for close, we probably need to test this out to see how often she will actually get critical damage landed on, and that will determine whether it's worth go all the way up to level 30. Um, I will actually be away for Easter holidays, so I won't be able to do any testing straight away. However, if you are getting a Cena, do not level up all the way to level 30 first. Just have a play around. Uh, maybe also try it out in the Goddess Trial just to see how easy it is. Is there for uh, Asina to actually take critical hits and how often you will actually trigger this skill? Because I do have a feeling that it may not actually activate all the time. One thing I would like to mention, and I also mentioned this for Radamensis, which is all of the light and dark characters, well, I say, well, like majority of the light and dark characters are going to get an exclusive Araya Shiki. For Asina got close, her exclusive Araya Shiki actually allows her to share her tenacity with your entire team. So what that basically means is that even if you start off with 100% tenacity, you will be sharing that across your whole team. And therefore, you naturally lower your Asina's tenacity and making it easier for she to be landing critical hit against and also at the same time protecting all of your other teammates because now they have higher tenacity etc so that exclusive arashiki is going to be a massive game changer for a single god close once again this is not going to be ready at the start of this um the event when a single got close will be released. However, in the future, I think they will definitely get another power jump again once that exclusive Rashiki is ready. So just bear that in mind. Right now, this trigger skill, a bit temperamental. It's kind of contradicting with all of the other high-end optimization for equipment and the Rashiki. However, in the future, that will actually be resolved through her own exclusive Rashiki. So bear that in mind. Then we move on to Constellation. Constellation is going to be, I, in my opinion, the most important thing about Asina Gokos, at least right now. And that is because at 9 out of 9, what happens is she can use the God of Goddess immediately at the start of the battle. So this basically allows you to put up uh, protection and cut off the damage by 40% at the start of the battle. So this is extremely useful right now because it essentially is going to spell the end of the Sagittarius Seiya meta because Sagittarius Seiya is now no longer able to do a crazy amount of attack at, at the beginning. Now that is obviously dependent on you actually have a Sina, but you know, potentially the meta is actually going to change by quite a bit in PvP now. All right, so I kind of went through all of Asina's skill kits, etc. So now I'll talk about a few thoughts about whether I think she's actually worth going for. So in the Chinese version of the game, say a god close was released before Asina, and that makes it really easy for you to pick because say a god close is number one, the most broken character in the game. Like everyone will, should be going for him as a priority. Now, because they have messed up the order, well, not messed up, but they have changed the order of how they release light and dark characters so much. I don't actually know when say a god close will be released in global now. So it is possible there will be actually a dry period where say a god close is not going to be released. Well, even if they are going to release more light and dark characters, there are actually quite a few dark characters that was released after Cena. So we're talking about Hypno, Sanatos. There's quite a few potential candidates for light and dark. So 
honestly right now i can't promise when say i go close it's going to be released so if you are going to save up for him just be warned there could be a really long dry period now in terms of seeing a good close herself she is probably the best i would say support defensive support in the game in the sense that she i won't say she is a traditional protector knight because she actually loves what she is doing is trying to protect the whole team which is really nice but what makes her really good is that the fact that she is able to protect the whole team but there are actually quite a few good characters who are performing similar kind of role one is kind of moses moses is already able to do that with kind of his opening skill yes moses is not able to sustain kind of that shield throughout this whole battle which is why saying god uh god calls are clearly better than moses no question there but at least you do have another character who can potentially substitute a singer in some way another character to worth mention is going to be surplus shion who once again no release in the game yet but should theoretically be the next character summonable in golden arrows she um Asina is essentially going to be an upgraded version of Shion because Shion also have a skill which allows you to protect your whole team at the start of the battle and also continuously just randomly putting up a shield to reduce damage reduction straight away. I do think Asina is better than Shion, but Shion once again is able to do a lot of the things that Asina should be doing. So here is kind of where the dilemma is because if you do want to invest all of this effort into Asina, then potentially you don't need Shun anymore or well at least you don't need him in the first team because the first team will be Asina. you may now play Asina in the first team your Shun in the second team Moses in the third team or something along that line but essentially you have to bear in mind that once Shun is released there is going to be another character who will be very similar to Asina, even though not as good so with that bear in mind, I would probably still recommend everyone to save up for say a god close. Like unfortunately it could be a really long dry period, but I just feel really bad to spend lots of resources on a scene when she can potentially be replaced by another character who will be coming out soon and also you risk missing out on the most broken character of all time so this is gonna be my source on whether you should be getting her or not now i do want to say is that if you do not get her what it could also mean is like i said the pvp meta is going to change quite a lot if your main team like myself is currently sagittarius sayer based uh, Poseidon, for example, didn't break the meta, but a single god class will 100% break the meta here. So your Sagittarius Sayer is no longer able to do as much impact in PvP anymore afterwards. So when I talk about a long period of dry period, it's not just in terms of your characters, you know, not just light and dark, but also in PvP, you will see certainly you may now fail a few more times. Other people will probably more competitive than you if they have Poseidon will have a thing that got close Sagittarius so Sayers meta is definitely gonna now slowly fade away so just be warned about that but still if you want my honest opinion I would still say save up your resources and bank everything on say a god close if you do want someone to perform in the same role as Asina then just simply get a surplus shield when he's out with golden arrows